hobbling behind the two overlanders now. We could have overtaken them, we're quite a bit faster, but we're enjoying the view as we go traveling down the Marian Fluss, which is bare. There is no grass anywhere. what is supposed to be the Marion Fluss. It's about 80 kilometers from where we were to the Kuneni River at Camp Synchro. And all around us, it's just stubble grass, what used to be Marion Fluss. And we stopped and had a chat to the locals behind at the last settlement. And they said there's been six years of drought here and pretty much all the livestock has died. We've seen very little livestock around here. And um, domestic animals probably as well have taken strain and the people are relying on whatever they can glean from tourists and the like. The government maybe sends a truck once a year with some food. And we're going to cross a dry river that leads down to the Kuneni before we get to camp. This is Camp Synchro on the Kuneni. There's one or two other river camps. Um, there's a community campsite. We checked them out first and now we are coming in here to Synchro to see what they, they have to offer. Ringing bells, perhaps. This is Camp Synchro. We've pulled in here after looking at the community campsite. There's a lot more happening here. The rates are the same. The shade is good. We're on the river and we have the corner site. Not far from the ablutions which is not really what we like but there's not many people here yet. We have a camp dog who's recently had puppies. Hey baby! And here George is busy finishing off setting up. You'll see how nice our campsite is as I go around the front. And this is the Kuneni River. And I can see two crocodiles. You probably can't see them now. I'll try and enlarge one of them, which is over there somewhere. There. And we've put up all our awnings. And we've got a tree on this side. So this is where we're going to spend the hottest part of the day. We'll be in the shade here. And with a very nice view over the Kuneni River. It's time to settle down with coffee and breakfast that's what we'll be doing next and other after that we're just going to relax well, coffee and breakfast finished and George starting some kit maintenance just fixing things that haven't been working properly and I have been bird watching because the bird life is abundant here in the at the Kuneni and we've got some new neighbors next door which we're very happy with also on the river and also birding people traveling through southern Africa. So we've named her Scallywag 
hanging around for a handout, I'll ask the proprietor if she has puppies because it looks like she has recently had puppies. And camp is very much set up. And George has got a poiki, a lamb neck poiki on the go down there. And we're watching the kuneni. It could be rising. They could have opened the sluice up at Ruakana. And at last, the sun is dropping lower and lower, so we're getting more shade. But we have a really nice campsite. From Opuwo, we traveled down the 3703 to Itanga. And then we went around the really rough road and turned up to Roidrom. We slept just before Roidrom. From Roidrom today, we drove up through the Marian Fluss all the way up here to the Kuneni called Camp Synchro. Good morning, Bulbul. Bull. I hope you're enjoying your rusks. Shits, have you? And you feeding little shits, are you? Now these don't eat seed, they eat rusks and fruit. They ate banana yesterday and apple. And now they're eating breakfast rusks. And we're out on a morning walk today to try and exercise our legs a little bit and we're exploring the area on foot and there's lots and lots of shale and sand and rocks. We're on a hiking trail, dry riverbed, like almost like the Fish River Canyon in some regards. Okay, go. Jackie on her morning stroll at Camp Synchro. You haven't got to watch your footing so much here as the rocks actually just breaking away underfoot. Very soft, very soft rock. Shadow. <laughs> the shadows. Me and my shadow by the shadows. Camp Synchro in the morning and there's still the same four groups here that there were and a small group of Himba people that have come to sell their wares and the English is very weak but there is some English and I have bought a few things and taken some beautiful photographs.
and it's about six o'clock in the morning. The sun hasn't risen, rid, risen yet here at Camp Synchro. It's pack up day today, so everything is a little bit of a mess. But first, we're going to go for a walk before the sun comes up and gets too hot. Most people in camp are still sleeping because it's been a hot day and only just cooled down in the last few hours. This is the path to Pebble Beach where we're going to go down quickly for a quick walk before we hit the road. And this is Pebble Beach. The river's gone down a lot since we've got here. The river was quite high when we arrived. But now it's over there on the far side, which we'll get there just now. She said we put a pinky in the... In the Kuneni. And this is very reminiscent of the Fish River Canyon, which we've both done three, four, five times. And um, we could be getting some practice for our next Fish River Canyon hike. Put his nose up quite easily. And we've seen a crocodile every day. We don't know if it's the same one or a different one. George and I have previously swum in the Kuneni without knowing there were crocodiles in here. Well, without knowing there were crocodiles on that spot. So we have previously swum. We did not swim in the river this time. We were warned against it. We saw the crocodile. The water is very muddy. You wouldn't see him coming before it's too late. And camp is over there somewhere. And here's a classic example of a deserted Himba village. The six year drought has forced most of the, the, the outlying Himbas to move in where there's water. The boreholes have gone dry, the livestock has died, and the people have moved on. Jackie. Having to reverse down, we got an oncoming car here. Yep, bring it. And someone was he coming down. This is the road. It's apparently the nastiest section of this pass. So we got a chap who's busy coming down couple traveling with their little puppy dog and there he is now we gotta go up here after this gentleman has come down Sorry, that was a bit of bad videoing. I was busy watching him and not concentrating on the video. He doesn't look too experienced. I don't even think he's in the right gear, but he'll miss me and he'll miss the cruiser. So that's the most important thing. And there he goes, lots of axle articulation and some rocks that I'm going to be fixing. Down the knob for sure. I don't think so. 